I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known. Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, the weather has finally cooled down a little bit in North Texas, Mesquite, Texas to be exact. And this time, last week, last Monday, it was 100 degrees. So now we're in the lower 90s, upper 80s, and I'm just so thankful to God that I can finally get some pressure canning done. So that is what this video is all about. I'm going to share with you how I pressure can uncooked beans with a little meat in it. Okay, let's get started. Okay guys, I have a lady friend. I've been doing her hair since 1993 and when she gets things on sale, pick up for herself, she always buys me some too. You can see right here, these baby lima beans, 50% off, she only paid a dollar a bag. She bought me three bags. I'm going to pressure can them. I've already gone through them and I'm going to rinse them real good. As you can see here, I rinse the beans real good. Anything that floats to the top, any bean that looked like it was uh, dead or, you know, just not a good bean, I'm going to remove it. These all look pretty now, good. Now, I'm only going to leave about a cup and a half of water in this pot and let the beans absorb it overnight. I don't soak my beans overnight in water because of the myth that it helps to remove uh, what's in the beans that causes you to have a lot of gas. Um, and these beans are going to be pressure canned, uncooked with some ham, so there's no need for me to uh, soften them up too much uh, because they're going to cook inside of the jar when I pressure can okay, them. Okay, so it's the next day, and you can see the beans uh, are swollen a little bit, but they're still uncooked because there wasn't enough water in them for them to swell up real big. However, I um, am going to add some liquid. I put about two-thirds full of the beans. And then you remember I told you guys a while back that that same friend that gave me these lima beans gave me a um, half of, um, I think it's what you call the butt of the ham. And it was on sale and it hadn't expired uh, for a little bit over $3. So I took it and just cubed it up and put it in little baggies and had it in the freezer. And it's still frozen, but I added a little bit to each of the jars. And by the way, since I said jars, let me let you know that you need to make sure when you sanitize your jars, examine them. Make sure that there are no nicks and chips and cracks in your jars. Okay, so back to what I have in here. I have the baby lima beans that had a little water on them overnight. I drained them and rinsed them off, filled them two thirds full in each uh, jar. These are quarts and this is a, a three quarters of a quart, but I will still process them for the same amount of time. I also in the freezer had some sweet bell pepper that was frozen. So I put a little bit of that on top of each uh, jar. I added a teaspoon of garlic powder and about one fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. Now, at this point, you can put in uh, water or uh, vegetable stock, whatever you want to add, but I'm going to add some water and I'm going to fill it all the way up to here to allow room for expansion. Okay? I'll be back 
when I got these all filled up with water. Now that I have my jars filled with the water, I take my debubbler and I'm gonna go down the sides of the jar to make sure that there are no um, pockets of, or bubbles or air pockets. I've already done it, but I wanted to just demonstrate it for the sake of the video. Okay? So, I've taken care of that. Now, let me just say one more thing to you. Anything that you can, as I said, with meat has to be canned in a quart jar for 90 minutes. And anything that has meat in it in a pint will be pressure canned for 75 minutes. So this is in between a pint and a quart. So all of this will go into the same pressure canner for 90 minutes. You can add salt to your um, beans, but I'm on a sodium restricted diet, so I'm not gonna add any additional salt because there is some salt in the cubed ham. So that would probably be my limit for the day, a serving of these beans with the ham in it. Another thing I wanna say is, when you sanitize your jars, you can wash them with hot sudsy water. And then if you want, you can dip them in a boiling pot of water, turn them upside down, let them dry. Or you can put them on the heat cycle in your dishwasher. Or you could turn your oven to about 250 degrees after you washed and rinsed the glass jars. You can put them in the oven, okay, until you're ready to use them. But know this, when you pressure can, even if you have some type of bacteria on your jar, you touched it, touched the doorknob, I don't know. I'm just giving you an example. After 90 minutes of pressure canning, anything that is a, a destructive or harmful pathogenic bacteria will be destroyed during the canning process. Okay? So a simple wash and a good rinse is sufficient but if you want to be extra precautious, like me, I have a sensitive stomach, so I just dip them in water, hot water, okay? Now, these, this is what is considered a cold pack because the broth is not hot, the water is not hot, the beans are uncooked, the meat was frozen, as well as the uh, sweet peppers, Okay, so now it's time to clean the rims of your jar. And this bowl is 5% acidity white vinegar. And I took my paper towel, and my paper towel, I immersed it in the uh, vinegar and the solution, and I'm just gonna wipe around the rims of the jars to make sure that they did not come in contact with the fatty meat from that ham or grease because that will make your seals not work. And I turn this over and I'm gonna do it several times to make sure that I thoroughly clean. And all you have to do is clean right here. I'm touching it and I know I contaminated it. I just, but I have to demonstrate it. You just wanna make sure this area right here is, uh, wiped off with the vinegar. So I'm gonna do it again because my natural oil in my skin may have contaminated it. I'm gonna get another piece of paper towel and I'm gonna wet it with the vinegar. Here we go. And I'm gonna to continue to wipe. And so when we did that the second time, we know that it's clean. Okay, now the other thing I want to tell you is when you're doing this, it'll be a good idea for you to be warming your lids up. You used to boil your lids for five minutes, but that was years ago when they had a lot of rubber around the balls and care lids. But now they only uh, suggest that you keep things canned for 18 months and the ring of rubber around lids are not as thick as they used to be. Now here is an older lid. 
has been used before. I keep them. I don't use them for canning, but I just want to share with you. This is how they used to look. You can tell I use this one. That's why it has the indentation. But I'm going to go in, in my box, and I'm going to get some new lids, and I'm going to uh, warm them up, not bring them to a, 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 a boil. I'm just going to warm them up because... I don't want the, to destroy the rubber around the lid. And I know that pressure canning them will sanitize them and heat them up and they will uh, seal. So I'll be back when I put the rings and the lid. Okay, on. as you can see here, the water is hot, but it's not boiling. And I'm gonna pick up one lid and I'm gonna just put it on top of the jar. Let me share something with you. These are the lids that I told you guys that I bought off of Amazon. And you can see they are the ball, sure tight. And I caution you guys to make sure that the merchant that you purchase from on Amazon is not selling knockoff uh, lids that are made in China. But these are indeed the ball lids. I haven't had any problems with them whatsoever. So I'm going to place another one right here. And you can see it's a ball with the lid. All you have to do is warm them up. You don't have to boil them. Okay? Because that, like I said, wears out the rubber seal. I don't reuse lids for canning. I use them for like a canister. I make jewelry. I collect seeds. Let's do that for DIY projects. Do it yourself, but I, uh oh, that's the wrong size. <laughs> Put that one back in the water and let's get the smaller one right here because that is a regular mouth lid. And this last one would be for the wide mouth. And please excuse that jug of water on the floor. It fell after I um, missed putting it on the um, countertop. That was for my can. It's not hot. I just put the water in the um, canner and I have it on real low. So uh, you want to make sure that you don't put cold jars of food into hot water and you don't put food that is hot into a cold canner with cold water. I hope I said that right. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on my rings. I put one here, just so I can let you see that you don't screw them on real, real tight, just finger tight. Now, when I put this phone down, I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit, but not a lot. And never, ever, ever touch or press down on this little indentation right here. You see that little circle there? That's the part that will be flat after uh, they seal. So don't force it at any point during the canning process before you can or when you take them out the canner, don't press down on that area. Just wanna give you a couple safety precautions. Now this is my All-American canner and the All-American canner, you're not supposed to fill it up more than halfway. Now what I just put in here was the remaining vinegar. I use that to um, help keep the jars clear i say pretty really keep them pretty for years and years if you add just a little vinegar in your canner every time you can and the other thing i want to tell you about the uh, amount of water always read your instruction man manual for the type of canner that you have and that's why i'm not telling you specifically how much water i added because that will stay in your mind and you'll think that's what you need to do for your canner now my canner is very old uh that's why you see these little rings around here but every now and then when i am not busy which is very rare i will come in here and clean this real good with uh some type of vegetable oil and we'll get rid of that um ring okay but i haven't done it in a while 
because my company keeps me very busy. Also, I want to tell you that uh, if you're canning, pressure canning for the very first time and you want someone to assist you and be able to have a camera on you and look what you're doing step by step, I offer pressure canning classes and they're always on a Sunday at noon after I come home from church, 12 uh, noon Central Standard Time, and you're always welcome to email me at Lady Cheryl's Natural Products at gmail.com, and we'll set up a session, a private session with you and maybe a few other people where you'll be canning, and I will coach you through it as you do it in real time via a Zoom, Zoom meeting, okay? Because I know it can be... Um, I'll cause you to have anxiety, especially the first couple of times that you press your can. So now I'm going to turn on my uh, gas and I'll start putting my jars in. And at the bottom, you see I've added that little plate. It's very important, no matter what canner you use, you should have a metal plate at the bottom to keep your jars from coming in direct content with the heat source, whether it's gas or electric that can cause your jars to break. Another safety precaution I want to share with you is try to put your jars in where they're not touching their space in between every jar. And if you don't have enough, this canner, this this model can hold eight quarts. So I have the eight, but if I didn't have eight, let's say, for example, I only had seven, I always keep an empty jar of water in it to balance the canner out so nothing will be rocking and rolling. And now I'm going to bring the canner to a boil. And I'll come back. While this is heating up, I want to share this empty jug with you. I told you that was on the floor. I use regular tap water. It says distilled water. I just keep this under the sink for when I'm canning. And the reason why I pour the water in by the jug is because this canner, this all-American canner, is very heavy. And I save wear and tear on my back by not lifting very heavy things. So I put the canner on the stove empty, and then I bring my water over to it to uh, put the uh, right amount of water. Remember, follow your manufacturer's directions. We have to learn as we get older, and even make practices while you're young to conserve your muscles and don't strain them. Uh, you will uh, feel better if you work smarter and not harder. And also, when I have finished canning the um, beans with ham, I use a pot, a sauce pot like this one, or even a little larger one, and after I remove the jars, I dip the water out. Again, I don't lift the canner anymore. I used to, but it's not necessary. You get the same re results. It may take a couple seconds longer or a minute or so longer, but your body will feel much better, and thank you if you dip the water out. Okay, guys, once the water starts to boil at the very beginning you see evidence that it's getting ready to boil it'll be at this point that you put your top on and the all-american canner has these bolts and you tighten them up and then you're going to watch here the gear gauge and for my altitude it needs to get uh at 10 and sometimes it'll go over just a little bit between 10 and 11 and it'll be at this point that i'll put on my weighted regulator and some people just call it a weight and it has numbers on it as you can see here and it'll go right here to this 10. so i'll come back when the gear gauge is at 10 or just a little bit over as you can see here my gear gauge is just a little bit past 10. i know my canner i know my stove so i know that's the perfect uh, area for it to be for me to maintain it so I put on my 10 pound weight and then I'm going to adjust the knob on my stove the dial on my stove to maintain this pressure at this point 
in the at the gear gauge at this stage. Now, the more you do it, the the more you're gonna know how to maintain that just a little bit above 10 pounds of weight for your altitude. If your altitude is higher and you need to maintain it at 15 uh, for the gear gauge and put 15 pounds of weight on it, follow your manufacturer's directions, okay? All right. So it's right where I want it to be, and it's been like that for the last five minutes. So now I'm going to set my timer for 90 minutes. Okay, so the timer went off. And now it is time to turn off the gas and I'm going to wait until this gear gauge go all the way over to zero then I will remove the weight and at that point it will be time to open the okay, can. Okay guys you can see the gear gauge is all the way at zero that means there's no pressure. I remove the 10 pound weight and I'm going to try to do this so I can explain something to you. You want to take the bolts off like I did all the way around and then you're going to slightly turn and open the canner away from you. So in case there's some steam there. You see, you use it like a shield. And you can look down in there and you can see my beans look great. Okay, now I'm gonna go get my gripper. So this is the jar gripper. You take the wooden part and put it inside your palm of your hand and the rubber around the jar gripper at the bottom, the green portion, is what you will lift the jar out of the canner with. So I'm going to take this one and just ease it up because it's still going to be boiling. Oh, they look wonderful. And then you're just going to put it on a towel. Or you can use a cutting board. Doesn't that look wonderful? Absolutely wonderful. Okay. So I've got to stop because I'm in the middle of a pressure canning class. I need to get back to my class. <laughs> but I had to show you that part. Okay, guys. So I am in a Zoom class uh, with a young lady canning for the first time. She's an excellent student. She had everything prepped. She read her direction. She even did a test run with her, her uh, pressure canner. Probably the best student I ever had. And I was just sharing with her how to remove the jar from the canner. As you can see here, it's still boiling. And you want to take your jar gripper and you will know the part that you're supposed to have in the palm of your hand. As I stated previously, there, it's right there, the wooden part. Let me try to steady my camera. And then the, the handle itself or the gripper part itself will mold to the jar because it's hot and then you just place it down and you want to make sure when you put all your jars on your towel or your wooden cutting board don't let your jars pop, uh, touch and as i was telling this before i started film, filming this as i was telling the young lady we heard the pop look at that indentation that i showed you earlier in the video it's gone this jar has sealed. And I'll show you later how we do a test. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Just beautiful. So you can still see a little boiling going on. All you have to do is take them out, make sure they're not touching, and then you're gonna put a double layer paper towel or you can use a dishcloth. I'm in the middle of a class, so I'm just doing the paper towel. And they've already been pinging, okay? All right. Leave your jars undisturbed for 24 hours. The next day, you can remove the rings, wash off your jars, turn them upside down for a short period of time to make sure they're not leaking. That way you know they have sealed. And then I like to put on the top of the lid the month and the date. That way I know I won't use that lid again. So for less than... $3.25. I have more than, I don't know, 18 servings of beans, and they are absolutely delicious. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap for this video. I hope I share something that you can use. Remember, check me out on Monday nights and check out my natural skin and hair care line, and I sell candles too, and honey. Check out that website at Lady Cheryl's Products. Dot com.
Bye now. Do your own, eat your own. It's not all you can do with. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. See you real soon.